To be a stealer is to consider others before you consider yourself. To protect your brother, even from himself. To give support at your own expense. And when wearing the black and gold suit of armor and make sure nobody desecrates it, disrespects it, most importantly, we ourselves don't dishonor it. Whipped on the black and gold. These virtues I learned while playing for the Steers are what make the legacy of the black and gold timeless. They are passed down in the locker room from the steel curtain to anyone who valiantly wears the black gold. Creating a brotherhood that is deeper than money, business, and winning. To be a stealer is to consider others before you consider yourself. This is our culture, Steeler culture. Now, here are your hosts, Rob and Dan, the Steel Twins. Na 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 na, na 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 na. Hey hey hey, goodbye, you bald motherfucker. Na 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 na, come on! Na 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 na, everyone! Hey hey hey, hey. goodbye! Hey. It's about fucking time, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Christmas came early. You want to talk about a miracle? Here's a miracle of all miracles. Matt Canada, I can proudly say, has been fired by the Pittsburgh Steelers. The day has come, November twenty first will forever be enriched in Pittsburgh Steelers history as Matt Canna got fired day. It will be a national holiday in the city of Pittsburgh. Let's fucking go. It's about fucking time, yo. Seriously, how many times, how many years have we been preaching this? And it finally happened. We all feel good. We're all feeling great. Our, our, our voice was finally heard from whoever. There were mixed reports. Or Rooney fired him. No. Mike Tomlin, I don't care who fired him. Someone grew a set, finally. This is the first time in Steelers history that a coach has been fired midseason. First time in front. That's how bad this is. This is history. This is history, ladies this and gentlemen. This is fucking hilarious. This is how bad but it I'll is. I'll tell you what, man. This is the best day of my life. This is the best day of my life, too. Matt Cannon is gone. Cheers to that. Man, this man is fucking gone finally. Someone finally told him and said, bro, you're not good at your job. This team is failing. You are failing. This experiment is failing. After three and a half years, he is finally... Three and a half years too long. This guy is finally gone, man. We are finally free. Everyone is free from Matt Canada and the jet sweeps and the check downs and the sideline dunks. And never having a 400-yard offensive game. Ever. And being outgained every game this freaking season. That's all gone. That's all. We're all free now. We are all free. And last week was the last game that Matt Canada ever called a game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this week versus the Bengals will be the first game in three and a half long years 
that he will not call an offensive game. Nope. That he will not call a play. That alone makes me excited for Sunday. How are we feeling in the chat? How are we feeling, guys? He has finally gone. He's finally fired. It's about time. Our voice was heard. Still a nation has been heard. How many, cha- how many weeks has this champ been going around? Fire Canada. It went everywhere. It went to Germany. It went to London. It went to AEW. It went to the Pat McAfee show. It went everywhere. Any and everywhere you can think of. It went, it went to the Pens game in their opener. It, it went, went to the, dude, it went to the capital. It went to the capital, bro. The capital of the United States. Of Nobody, no, no, no Steelers fan, no Pittsburgh individual wanted this man to be here. No. No. Their voices were heard all freaking year. The Steelers could not ignore it anymore. No, it's about time they finally listened to us and listened to the fans. And they did what was necessary. Whoever it was, it was Art Rooney, the second, it was Mike Tomlin. I don't care who it was. Someone in someone in power finally grew a set. Mike Tomlin saying it was his decision and his decision only. Apparently, players found out like everyone else did on the news, on Twitter, on, on social media, yeah. on a- anywhere. I don't think they care as long as this fucking guy's no gone. Give a fuck, dude. You think how many players have been calling out Matt Canada's poor play calling? How many players, not just on the Steelers, but teams we face, have said, "Oh, it's that. It's so predictable. We know what's coming. We know what's coming." Yeah. God damn the you get the fuck out of here, all right? You're nothing like Matt Canada, all right? Yeah, the swear jar. It's empty like Canada's career. It's in my fucking way and shit. Ruining my mood. Nothing can ruin this, man. Nothing Dude, can ruin this. Everyone, guy. everyone was saying that Canada's Canada's game plan and his play calls were just terrible. Predictable. Players were tired of it. Chuck's a core for got benched because of it. Wrongfully benched. Wrongfully benched. I mean, if you want to bench him for performance, go ahead. But, but it that- wasn't for that. It was, it was because he wanted the offense. He wanted the team to play better. He was tired of the same old shit. But Tomlin wants to bench him for voicing his opinion, his frustrations. Now the man's gone. So why was Chuck's bench, Tomlin? <laughs> why was Chuck's bench if you were going to cut him you, three gonna, weeks You're going to give the guy his job back? You're going to give the guy his position back? Because the way I see it, the guy that you, sh- you should be benching is on the left side, and he fucking played terrible. I agree. I agree. He's uh, who's worse, Dan Moore, Kenny Pickett, or um, Matt Canada? Nonetheless, like like the 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 action was not worth the punishment for Chucks. No, no, but the action was worth the firing of Matt Canada today. It's 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 long overdue. It's about time. No more non four hundred yard games. No more. No more. Now, Grant, don't expect anything drastic. Just because Canada's gone, don't expect anything massive. To be overcoming with the offense. Don't expect 400 yards. Don't expect Kenny to throw for three touchdowns. Don't expect 30 points versus the Bengals. That'd be great, but don't expect it. Don't expect it. But I know we said this with Fickner and we were dead wrong, but I think anyone's better than Canada right now. Anyone. There's no way it can get worse. No way. There's there's please. Th- there's there's gotta be please. zero possibility that this can get worse. No, no please. way. No way. Every no. year, every year. Canada was the OC. The rankings, the progression, the production were dipping down deeper than the Titanic itself. Yeah, seriously. Canada's gone, folks. Fire Canada's gone. And now it's goodbye, Canada. <laughs> goodbye, Canada. I think we also got to say a goodbye to the sign not up yet. here. Not, not yet. yet. Not, that will be that'll happen at the end of the stream. This is going to be up here for one last time. Nah, one nah, last maybe stream. we should get a new sign that says goodbye, Canada. You want to pay another 50 bucks? Yeah. You sure it's the best 50 bucks I've ever spent? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> we still got to take it down, though. Oh, uh, this thing's... Okay, we're going to take it down. Okay, we said this thing was going to be up until he left. Just like the bench wall sign was up there. Right. That was down until we got benched. <laughs> yeah, so it's only right we take it down, but it won't happen until after, at the end of the stream. Because not only we got to discuss Matt Canada's firing, we got to discuss some candidates, we got to discuss what this means for Kenny, and we got to discuss, of course, the Steelers versus Bengals matchup. A lot to get into, a lot to talk about. This is what Matt, or Mike, Mike Tomlin had to say about Matt Canada's firing this morning. This uh, The firing was made at like 8, 8.40 this morning. Yeah, it's Very funny. early. Just like many Steelers fans, I woke up and I reached my phone, I went to Twitter, social media, and then I see this notification from the Steelers, like statement from Mike Tomlin, and I read, Matt Canada has been relieved. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. 
I'm like, wait a minute, are you for real? Are you serious? This is what Mike Tomlin had to say about Matt Canada. He said, Matt Canada has been relieved of his duties as offensive coordinator. I appreciate Matt's hard work and dedication. That's fucking hilarious. And I wish him the best moving forward in his career. Um, okay, obviously that's very professional, Mike Tomlin. But let's be honest. No, uh, no offense, was, Tomlin. I don't think anybody else is going to be joining no, you in that No, this guy boat. is done for football. This guy is done. This guy will never see another job in the NFL. Never. This guy is the worst coach in Steelers history. Yeah. Yes, I mean that. Yeah. He is the worst coach in Steelers history. There is a reason he is the first coach ever in franchise history. And for for a while might be the, might be the only. He is the only and first coach in Steelers history to be fired mid-season since 1941. Yeah. That's how bad it is. That's how warranted it is. This guy sucks. We all knew this. This guy sucks. The off, the offense and the offensive rankings kept getting worse year after year after year. The longer he became OC, the worse it got. Yeah. Even him getting on the sidelines, there wasn't much better production. There was not. There was not. There wasn't. Not, was nothing, the not much different. Yo. <laughs> nothing much different. <laughs> What's his name? Um, Mike Mike Tomlin seen Can on the sideline for like three games and said... Get your ass out of here. Like, 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 what, what the fuck am I, I took doing? three games. It's like, 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 why are we even wasting our time? Like, why are you here? No one likes you. <laughs> no one. If I had to You're just, only here because you got my son into college, but other than that, no one likes you. Dude, You're not good. If there, was, if there was any way, if you had to describe Matt Canada's Steelers run as OC in three words, it's, if, it's, 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 it's infinite. You can, you can say any three-word phases you want to. We can, we can go on another two hours just saying... Three words only of how we feel about Matt Canada's still a tender. Worst but coach ever. Worst coach ever. Matt Canada sucks. Fire Matt Canada. I mean. This shit sucks. I hate you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I can keep going. Dink and dunk. No, four, no, no 400 yards. I mean, I can keep going. You're fired, Canada. You're fired. That's the only thing that means right now. You're fired. You're fired, Canada. You're fired. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's about time, folks. I am I am happy. I'm partying right now. I am I am I'm feeling good. I am feeling gravy right yep. now. Now, with Canada finally relieved of his duties, no longer a Steelers coach. The duties of offensive coordinator will now go to running back coach Eddie Faulkner. Mm. But the play calling duties will go to quarterback coach Mike Sullivan. So they're both they're 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 they're, they're co-sharing the interim offensive coordinator position. Faulkner will be in the spot making up the game plan and the playbooks and everything like that, while Sullivan, Sullivan will, will be call calling. Call, so, Sullivan will be calling. To which Mike Sullivan in that play calling duty, that doesn't surprise me because he has prior history. Right. As coordinator, he was the coordinator for the Giants and the Buccaneers a few years back. Not not very good at it because he was fired from both instances, but he has prior history from play calling duty. So I can see why they would give Sullivan that responsibility. But Faulkner to draw up the game plan, set up the playbook, get the players ready, let them know that, what they're going that, with. That tells me they are going run heavy because Falk, the, Eddie Faulkner has been the Steelers running back coach for a couple years. And, and a good one at that, too. He's been a decent one. I mean, look what he's done for Najee. Think of Najee how you want, but he's still a, a decent running back. He can be productive for us. Jalen Warren is easily taking the number one spot. They need to swap him and Najee's reps and touches. Yeah. Just just literally swap them. No benching required. No benching involved. No, just, 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 just give Warren the carries that you would give Najee. Exactly. It's that simple. It's as simple as that. I mean, Jalen Warren is is great. Anthony McFarlane's development has been fun to watch the last couple of years. So, uh, if if you want to say that this is deserved for Faulkner, feel free. Now, this does not mean that Eddie Faulkner and or Mike Sullivan are the answer. They are nothing but interim guys. They are just fill-ins for this, the rest is, of the year. This is nothing but an audition for both coaches. I I would not even say that. That's the way I see it. I see this I, I as an audition. It. I don't want to see it as an audition. Yeah, because the the, the worry is that the Seals are just going to continue to promote from within. No. To which that's not the answer. They should not do that whatsoever. I've been preaching that whenever Kendall was gone, that Mike Sullivan was going to be the next coordinator, offensive coordinator for the Steelers based off their tendencies with You've promoting been... quarterback coaches to OC, Fickner, Canada, and now Sullivan. Right. 
Looks like he could be in that boat, which I hope that's not the case. Yes, uh, you've been saying that for about a year and a half. But based on our trend, on our track record, especially since since we uh, got rid of Todd Haley, all we've done was promote from within. Randy Fickner was the quarterback coach. Then uh, he was promoted to OC. Randy Fickner left. Matt Cannon was the quarterback coach. He was promoted as OC. Mike Sullivan's the quarterback coach. He could be promoted as OC. Or it could be Eddie Faulkner since they both are co OCs for the rest of the season. They are interim. They are not the answer. No. Going within, hiring from within again would be the definition of insanity. Do the same thing over and over and over and expect different results. You just, need, it would just you, be it would just continue the the case of them being complacent and, and Tomlin and, being complacent. And Mike Sullivan uh calling the shots, being the playing the OC role mainly. I mean, he that was his third time playing the OC role ever in the NFL, yeah. and the first two times didn't go very no, well. No, so they are not the answer. They are interim. I would like to see what they're going to bring to the offense, but they're not the. You're going to need someone with NFL experience. You're going to need someone under a hell of a good coaching system. One of the one of the more elites out there, you know, or the I, one of the more recognizable names. Just guys that have prior recognition and history and success. And success at the coordinator position just entirely. You got to get someone that has either found success or is under a successful coaching staff. Coaching tree. Coaching that. tree, exactly. So we are going I know it's I know it's early. Okay, we we still got what six six games left of the season and and whatever else. Uh I, I know it might be a little too early to discuss can, coaching candidates, but honestly, man, I don't think it's too early right now. Because again, Faulkner and Sullivan are not the answers. They're interims. We'll see what they can do. But no matter what they bring to the table, they're not the answers. Hiring within is not the answer. No. The answer is going outside the organization and bringing in someone successful, bringing in someone of of name, not, not just name value, but someone that has found success elsewhere. And we have a couple names we want to list off right here. First one is obviously going to be Byron Leftwich, yeah, who's, a, who's actually a free agent right now. Yeah, he's still out there. And he's been a name that's been circulating around all the social media about the the vacancy offensive coordinator position. Uh, I never shied away from po- possibly bringing in Byron wasn't Leftwich. It, wasn't it earlier this year he reached out to the Steelers? And yes, even yes. Him? Earlier he reached out to the Steelers about you know providing help, even as an offensive consultant. You know, whatever. You know, just being a part of the staff and aiding out the offense because the offense is shit. Right. The Steelers apparently did not even reply back. They didn't listen to him. And uh, they still aren't because they're going to rely on their position coaches underneath. For now, for now. For now. But I, I think bringing him in as an assistant or even even just bringing him in now wouldn't, wouldn't be that bad of an idea. It wouldn't. I'm not saying he would be the, the answer, but at least he's someone uh, – He's at least he's someone that has found success elsewhere, and he's not a position coach that we're trying to lean on within the system. Yeah, that would be an that that is the example of bringing in someone as an audition. Yeah, for that role. Yeah, that's bring true. Bring in You're Leftwich, right. let him play the next six games as OC, see what he can bring. That's his audition to get that job, rather than just interviewing him next year. That is what I call as an audition. Right. Right. Yeah, I get that. You're right. 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 But Byron Leftwich is going to be the most popular name, probably. Um, another name out there is going to be Ken Dorsey. He was just fired by the Bills. People say he was a scapegoat for the Bills' mistakes, for the Bills' underachieving in their failures. And Josh Allen's turnovers. And Josh Allen's turnovers. Ken Dorsey would easily, ten times over, more times over, honestly, than that, would be much better than Matt Canada. Yeah. He'd be a a, a perfect fill-in, honestly. I love Ken Dorsey. He found success with the Bills. He knows how to use his targets. So, yeah, I, I would absolutely love to bring in Ken Dorsey. Another one I'll throw out there is Cliff Kingsbury. As OC only, yeah, obviously. He's, yeah, we know how he was as a head coach for the Cardinals. Not a good resume. He's not a head coach whatsoever. But, you know, when you look at the quarterbacks he's worked with at the college level, yeah. Johnny Menzel was a great college player. He just didn't pin out in the, in the NFL. But Pat Mahomes is obviously the most notable one since he was the head coach at Texas well, Tech when he, Mahomes was the well, QB He was there. obviously with Kyler Murray with his time in Arizona, and yeah. now he is uh, the quarterback coach with USC, who is obviously Caleb Williams he's playing with, or he's, he's coaching with. He's working with. with, yeah. So that is a lot of name value when it comes to the quarterback position with Cliff Kingsbury. Maybe that's someone that we entertain and bring in at, for, for an interview, bring him back into the NFL scene. Just throwing his name out there. Yeah, that to get, be get, bad his, at all. get his feedback in the NFL. Him as an OC just... 
it, it's not a bad idea. He no. works more as an OC than a head coach. Another name I'll throw out there, and this is a familiar one, Pep Hamilton. Yep. If he sounds familiar, it's because the year we promoted Matt Canada, we interviewed Pep Hamilton for the OC job only because of the minority role. Mm -hmm. So we didn't view him as a serious can How the fuck do you promote Matt Canada when you interviewed Pep Hamilton? Who the... Like, to this day... I know it was three and a half years ago, but to this day, how the fuck do you fuck that up? Well, the Steelers did. They just brought him in for a minority role... Uh, interview because yeah, that's it, what that's it, required. Yeah, that's it. That's all they did, and that's what a lot of teams do normally. But he but had, they they missed an opportunity at giving this guy a shot. Seriously, he's forty nine years old. I love to bring him in, get him back into the NFL scene. He's worked with a lot of great quarterbacks over his time, so I like to bring him in. And 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 uh, you know the Steelers are gonna have to do their due. They are gonna have to do their minority role uh, uh, interviews again. Yep. They're gonna have to. It's 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 the NFL rule. Even if they want to promote within, which again is not the answer, they're still gonna have to do their minority role, uh, minority interviews. So Pep Hamilton should be another one. That's someone they could they should seriously consider. Another one we'll throw out there. Deuce Staley. Deuce Staley's out Deuce there. Yeah. Deuce Staley. Yeah. Deuce Staley. He's the uh, actually he's the assistant head coach and the running back. Or running game coordinator specifically for the Carolina Panthers. He actually held that same role with the Detroit Lions when Dan Campbell was first hired yeah. by Detroit. So, and considering, because I mentioned assistant head coach, I don't believe, I don't think the Steelers have filled that position yet since John Mitchell retired this past offseason. I'm going to check that. So, um, as of right no, now, we do, we, do, we do not have an assistant head coach. So, if we're looking at getting somebody to fill in that assistant head coach role, since it's pretty vacant at the moment, now, they easily could have done this much earlier during the offseason if they got rid of Matt Canada like they yeah, probably Eric should B. have. Enemy. Eric and Bien Enemy. Eric Bien-Enemy that role, considering he was gifted that role in, 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 in Washington for the commanders. But we didn't do that. We just kept Matt Canada. Just to fire him 12 weeks into the season. Yeah, so, but it, it, if there's a guy that we want to give the assistant head coach, because the assistant head coach, I don't think Deuce is going to walk away from that because that's a pretty secure role right there right. on the and team. Obviously, he is a former Steeler. So, yeah, he was, he was the backup running back for Jerome Bettis and Willie Parker. So, yeah. But uh, if we were to offer him the assistant head coach role I th and the OC Position, I think that would give him more. I think he'd be more welcoming to that offer, right? Instead of just the OC role, because why would he leave for an offensive coordinator position, but then leave an assistant head coach role? You know and, what I mean? And he worked under Doug Pearson with his time in Philly as an assistant head coach, as the running back coach. So if we were to offer him that assistant head coach role, but give him the offer of the OC position, to which I mean, many people have argued that he's more than deserving of an offensive coordinator opportunity. Yes, this would be which the time he, which, for it. which he absolutely is. You know, uh, he like I say, he worked under Doug Pearson, and 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 if 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 they're going to view Eddie Faulkner as a serious guy that they're going to lean on to take over the offense for the rest of the year, and it's probably going to be a name they're going to look at to retain that position if they want to keep the in-house promotions, which I'll keep saying it is not the answer. No, then they should view Deuce Staley as a re as a reasonable option because of the same position coach, but also assistant head coach. And just, again, he worked under Doug Pearson, who has a good coaching tree. Very good coaching tree. So I think that's a serious name we should look at. There was another name you were telling me about off camera, man. Yeah. He, and I he, really love this he, idea. He's a guy that has caught my eye. His name is Clint Kubiak. If the last name Kubiak rings a bell, Clint Kubiak is the oldest son of former NFL coach Gary Kubiak, former Broncos and Texans head coach. And it's actually kind of crazy because both of them – kind of have a similar like pathway into the NFL. When Gary Kubiak first broke into the NFL as a coach, he was taken under under the wing, under the coaching tree of Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan's father. Right. Legendary coach, great Broncos head coach, won him two Super Bowls. You know, Gary Kubiak was the offensive coordinator, and I think at the same time quarterback coach within the last years of John Elway's career where they won back-to-back -back Super Bowls with Terrell Davis as the running back. Right. And because of how successful he was with, with however long he was with Denver as the offensive coordinator, that got him a head coaching role with the, the Texans, then later the freaking Broncos again. And we know how he did with Denver as a head coach, won him Super Bowl 50. Right. And Clint 
he is actually currently the passing game coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, which light bulb. Who coaches the San Francisco 49ers? Mike's son, Kyle Shanahan. Similar stories. And it's legitimately a carbon copy story. It's and crazy it's, it's because crazy. The, story, the story's great, but the coaching tree, the coach that he's under is even greater. I mean, that's the son of Mike Shanahan, and this is the son. Clint Kubiak is the son of Gary Kubiak. It's like both the two fathers of these coaches worked together for a long time. Great history. Now the sons are working together. This is a man under Shanahan's coaching tree. And keep in mind, before he even joined Shanahan's coaching tree, he has prior history as an offensive assistant, a passing game coordinator, and, and an offensive coordinator. He was a former offensive coordinator for the Vikings back in 2021 when he took that role after his father, Gary, passed away. Wasn't or that, not passed away, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, stepped away. He what, retired. Wasn't that uh, Jay Jetta's uh, rookie year? Uh, I don't know. I think it might have been. It was first or well, second year. Well, I thought it was year. 2020. Well, first or second year, regardless. I mean. Yeah, I checked back. That offense was 12th ranked wow. overall on offense. Wow. So it's not too bad, you know, top 15. It's kind of something that we're kind of looking for, you know, a, a step in the right direction. This is a man that is under Shanahan's coaching tree, and we've all been preaching that we need to get somebody from the Shanahan coaching tree because that that coaching tree is it's very is, successful. First of all, last year when we were entertaining Steelers offensive coordinator options before they unfortunately elected to keep Matt Canada just to fire him 11, 12 weeks into the season. But yeah. we were looking at Thomas Brown, who was the uh, assistant head coach and tight ends coach under Sean McVay, and McVay has a great coaching tree. And, and McVay he, came from the Shanahan tree. Exactly. Both so, Mike and Kyle. Dude, so exactly, see, see where this is going. And uh, I think Thomas Brown is now the OC for the Panthers, right? Yeah. That's the name we were entertaining. We need to go out and get someone under a great coaching tree, a great coaching staff, someone that has succeeded, an offensive coaching staff that has succeeded in the NFL. And you bring up Clint Kubiak. Look at Kyle Shanahan's coaching tree. It might be one of the best in the league. Robert Sala, Mike McDaniel who's probably the most offensive wizard in the league. Yeah. D'Amico Ryans, Mike LaFleur, who's with the Packers, right? Yeah. Or is he with the, the Jets? One Ma of the two. Matt LaFleur? Mike. Mike LaFleur. Mike LaFleur. Mike LaFleur. I, I never heard of Mike LaFleur. I think that's Matt's brother. I never heard regardless, of Mike LaFleur. Regardless. I mean, you see the names out there. I mean, the, the history speaks for itself. Clint Kubiak would be a great option, dude. Yeah. Just based on that reason. And he's 36 years old. He's young. He's a more of a modern offensive mind. And he's just picking the brain. He's soaking up all the information that Kyle Shanahan is feeding all his coaches. From and he underneath. appears to be doing very well for Brock Purdy at the same time. You know, you know that's the argument that people continue to make with Kenny Pickett. You know, you give him a, a more competent, younger, fresher offensive coordinator, you know, that, you know, is more modern and up to date with the NFL. You know, you have him work with Kenny Pickett, then maybe Pickett can kind of break out. I'm still kind of, I still kind of have my limitations about that because Kenny's had his moments. He's had his opportunities. Even when Kendall was making up the plays, drawing up the plays, the right. opportunities are there. Just Kenny's missing them completely. So if he's missing it with Canada, then why should I believe he's going to finally hit it with another coordinator? But if the Steelers want to think that way, a guy like Clint, with how young he is, the passing game coordinator that he is for the Niners, and just a solid resume that he has, plus a QBAC, you know, family heritage, you know, the bloodlines. The NFL bloodlines. The NFL bloodlines, that, that the you know. love, you know. You no, know, so. they, they love that shit. So it's like Clint could be a serious consideration for that OC yeah. position. And I see the chat. They throw a name out there. The Dolphins quarterback coach, Daryl Bevel. That's another name, too. I mean, look at the development of uh, Tua. I mean, it's very and, – and he's under – Mike McDaniel's coaching tree. I mean, I know he's he's only been the coach for the Dolphins for two years, but you see the offensive genius Mike McDaniel is. You see the points they're putting up. You see the the explosiveness, the high energy that that offense sprouts out. I, I I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm fucking jealous. So yes, that is an regardless anyone that is outside the organization that has found success under a good coaching staff is someone the Steelers should consider. They have an endless amount of options. Next offseason, they can look, they will do their due diligence. They will look within their organization. They'll look at Faulkner. They'll look at Sullivan. They might even look at our assistant offensive coordinator, right? None of them are the answer. Hiring from within is not the answer. It has failed us time after time, and it's gotten worse year after year after year. 
Ever since Haley's left, the offense has only progressed worse. Yeah. Because of our decisions, our offensive coordinator, and our decisions to promote from within, within house. The defensive coordinator position is even hurting because of the same reason. Mm-hmm. It's got to stop. It has to stop. The in-house promotions need to end. You need to go out and grab someone outside your organization under a successful coaching staff, particularly someone offensive-minded like a McDaniel or a McVay or a Shanahan. That's just the way to go in the NFL nowadays. You have to. You have to. Because when you look at Tomlin's coaching tree, I mean, it's not even growing. No. And he's been here how long? No. That thing hasn't grown. No, that, you... that, that is stuck down in the ground, in the dirt. That's not coming up. No. So it's like you have to go out your way. You have to adapt to the NFL culture nowadays. You got to get somebody from somebody's coaching tree. Right. That's the way to go. So that, if... That's why teams like the Dolphins and the Niners – and, and and the Packers, you know, they found success. Real good success at that. Exactly. So if there's if there's a couple names that we are going to be seriously looking into, like we threw out Leftwich, we threw out Pep Hamilton, we threw out all these other names, right? But if there's some serious guys we are looking at, and shout out to the chat for this name, I wasn't even looking at him. Daryl Bevel for sure, Clint Kubiak, or Deuce Staley. Those are my three top options, at least as of now. I haven't looked any deeper yet, but as of now, those are my three top options next year. They're going to have to do some minority uh, uh, interviews because that's the NFL rule now. So definitely can make them serious considerations. But don't, no- don't just do it for the sake of, hey, I did this. I followed the rule. No, they are serious considerations, serious candidates. They're just out there waiting for the opportunity. They have an endless... Dude, the line is piling up right now. They have an endless amount of names for next offseason. It fucking excites me. Yeah. It's up to the Steelers whether they want to let any of them in. Are they just going to close up shop like, nah, it's closed, it's closed. You know, we're, we're going to stick with the guys we got now. No, that can't be the way we go. It failed you. No, you got to open up the doors. You got to open up the club. You got to let these guys in. You got to let these guys in, man. Let them have some fun. Let them party it up. Let them use these weapons. Let, let them let them come in and bring their input, their knowledge, their knowledge, their offensive minds, their scheme, because the scheme we have is freaking old as shit. Let them it's run, stale. Let them run free, dude. Seriously. Let them be what they need to be, because this this position, this, this the coordinator position that has opened up, this could be a big opportunity for anybody to really make their mark in the league, make their mark in the NFL. Yes. That way they get a big opportunity two, three years down the road. Right. This is what coaches work their way for. It's what Tomlin did. Dude, look, That's what Tomlin did as a DC for the Vikings. And then he fucking made his, made his mark in the interview with Dan Rooney, and now he's been the head coach however right. long. Many coaches crave for this opportunity. Dude. You can't just gift it to the people that – are in house. You can't be doing that. That doesn't work no. anymore. It's more of a. It's like, a, hey, thanks for your service, but uh, you know, like, no, we're not doing that. We're not being buddies. We're not being team friendly. No, we're going out and doing the proper business decisions. Today, the Steelers did that properly by firing Matt Canada. Took them three and a half years, but they finally did it. Better late than never. Better late than never. You're absolutely right. I'd much rather them fire him now than keep him the rest of the season and just let his contract run out. Fuck him. He sucks. Fuck him, dude. Seriously. Nothing personal, but it's business. It's as simple as this. If you're not qualified for the job, you got to get out. You're done. You suck. You fucking suck. I am sick and tired. I got so sick and tired of watching him for three and a half years. It's about time. And I want to give a shout out to the chat for bringing out another name. Shout out to the chat, man. They're bringing up some extra ideas. Ben Johnson. Yep, Ben Johnson. The Lions OC. The only, the only problem is, will he allow it from OC to OC? They do that. They can do that. We're going to need permission from the Lions to do so, but would he lateral from the Lions to the Steelers? Would he want to leave Dan Campbell for Mike Tomlin? I mean, based off the resume, I mean, I think just about any other coach would want to come coach for Mike Tomlin based right. off the type of person and leader that he is. But I, I don't know. The Lions are, are on a hot streak, and Dan yeah. Campbell's he's building something. I mean, I don't know if Ben Johnson would want to leave that. No. One, thi- one thing I would definitely not do is uh, look at any – uh, coaching, uh, college coaches. No, no, I would not. No, I would no, not. No, because I was Canada. That didn't work. Let, let them come. Let them come in as position coaches and build themselves up. That's how all these other guys are where they're at now. Yeah, can't just bring in an offense or a college coach and make them the OC with a young offense that really needs to start striking within a couple years. Next year, next year, seriously, next year's make or break for everyone on the offense. 
especially Kenny Pickett. We'll get into that later. But no one from no one from college bring in someone that has built their way up throughout the league, and someone with a successful and a a, a very modern coaching staff. That's what they need to do. The line is long, but you better start interviewing every single last one of them. I want to hear interview after interview after interview after interview. If we get any in-house promotion, if Rob is right on his prediction in a year from a year and a half ago where he said Mike Sullivan's going to be promoted, that's that's not the answer, and nor is it going to go over well. If if he is promoted, if he's gifted the job like Matt Candle was, nothing will change. No. Nothing will change. You will see nothing but the same old shit, the same old type of plays, play calling, all that bullshit that we have been enduring for since Fickner. Yeah. Too long. Right. Too, too long. Too long. But Enough. I, but, but I will say, man, uh, and what we'll talk about when we get into the Bengals and the Steelers game, it's that, uh, you know, this might be exciting a little bit because we might finally see some middle of the field. We might see less checkdowns. We might see a little more aggression up 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 in the up in the field towards uh toward towards the middle of the field. We might get a little more aggressive in the passing game. That's gonna have to be Kenny Pickett's responsibility, but what can what what can Faulkner bring to the playbook and what will Sullivan call? Yeah. They're not the answers, but I like to see what they can bring to the table. There's certainly, with this, the firing of Cannon, these guys now taking over the position, it definitely makes the Bengals game that much more interesting. Oh, yeah. Because if Cannon was here, I mean, I couldn't give a shit. I'm going to be real. I couldn't give a shit because I know exactly what was going to happen. They knew what was going to happen. Dude, we, we were going to see we nothing were, but the same stuff. We were, we were, because when we set the stream up last night, made the thumbnail and everything, we had to change for great reason. We were going into this the same way as last week. Oh, well, the Steelers are facing another backup quarterback with the with the Bengals, right? With uh, Jake Browning. Yeah. You know, it's going to be the same story. It's not a cakewalk. It's not an easy dub just because we have a backup quarterback. If anything, that makes us scared even more. That worries us even more. Now, in this game, that's still the same feeling. But I'm a little more excited because I want to see what the offense is going to do. Don't expect 400 yards. Don't expect 30 points. Don't expect 303 touchdowns from Kenny Pickett. That's not happening. But I want to see what little things they can add. Some middle of the field, less checkdowns, more of the motion, right? More of the usage of muth fucking yeah. plays. Yeah. Pickens. Get Pickens. Pickens hasn't done shit in the last no, neither, neither has Deontay Johnson. No. So I want to see what they can incorporate with the targets we have. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. That's what I want to see from the offense is what the, the tiny details. What are they going to bring to the table? What are they going to add? How, how more fired up are we going to be? Yeah, like, I, I honestly think that firing Canna is going to be a, a confidence booster for everyone. You know, he was already killing everyone's confidence with his repetitive garbage play calling, his basic playbook. Oh, you could tell. You could tell on the field the no, stuff that they were doing. When everyone. It, it was the same. It was generic. It was everyone. stale. Everybody was getting tired of it. Everyone was drained. You felt it on the way that they played the sport. No, because... It's 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 like it's like it's like going to a job any job it's like going to a job and you got that you got that boss that just does nothing and you hate him and it brings the energy down and you just don't give a shit yeah you couldn't give a fuck whether if you have like a supervisor or a boss that brings that energy and and you know brings a good environment and then you're like hey now the mood is up and you you're a little more energized to do your yeah, job you, you know you get that, that groove on you know you're that, on your best that is what Matt Canna brought to the players. Is they just killed everything. No one gave a shit. No one wanted to play for him. No one wanted to hear his calls or do his calls. No one. No. No. This is going to be a confidence and a, and a morale booster for everyone. They're going to have a, a little more freedom. They're going to see what they can truly do. At least that's what I hope. That's what I hope. Don't expect a massive offensive game. It'd be, I ain't gonna lie, it'd be fucking hilarious. The first game without Matt Canada, we get 400 yards. That would be a ama- that would be, good, but I'm not expecting it. Don't expect it. I just want to see the little things added. Where are they gonna, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna scheme up Kenny in the passing game? And, you know, they're still gonna use Warren and Najee, rightfully so, as they should. But mm-hmm. I want to see what they're gonna incorporate this week. That's the most exciting part for this Bengals game. It's a must win. We have to win for the division and for our record. We need, it's a must-win AFC North battle. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Last week was must-win because of the division. Well, now we're 2-1 and one after being 2-0. and oh. We cannot fall 2-2 two and two to division. No, we can't lose back-to-back games to divisional opponents no. who are starting backup quarterbacks. No, we cannot. 
That would be terrible. No. That would be a shitty way on this trail of what is already a tough schedule. Yeah. So we cannot Can't afford that. it. Can't afford it. We cannot. This is a must win for sure. But I am a little more excited going into this game just to see what the offense can do. I'm not expecting anything crazy. I'm not expecting a lot of great change. But we're also going in th- into this blind. We don't know what to expect. No, but you, you, you can, know, Canada just not being there, let alone, is just enough excitement. It is. It is. Now, you you could you could dig up some of Mike Sullivan's old tape and what he called when he was with, uh, you know, his previous uh, OC jobs and, and kind of get a glimpse of what he might do. But I want to see what Eddie Faulkner's input's going to be. Yeah. Again, they're not the answers. Even if they do good, they're still – because the, 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 the hiring from within thing is, is, is never – it should, it should never be a thing towards the Steelers' mind ever again. Well, let me just say this. Say that but, they do solid. They, 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 they do real well on the offense. The offense is more progressive and more productive and everything like that. The Steelers, in their mind, they'll obviously be in consideration, but that, that doesn't mean yeah. give them the job. No, because that, that is the thing with Tom, and is as long as they handle business and they do what's necessary to get a win, it doesn't matter how they do it. It could be as ugly as it was versus the Packers or – any other dub we got, the, I mean, the Titans, right? Yeah. It could be as ugly as any uh, ugly as any win we've got this year. Mike Tomlin wouldn't care because we handle business. We got the dub. Yeah. But regardless, uh, I, I am interested in seeing what they're going to bring to the table and if we can get some extra spark going on, on the offense, especially in the passing game. We already know what to expect from the ground game. Now, this is where we get into Kenny Pickett for – for for the for the Kenny Pickett needs a new OC needs a proper OC crowd. This is his chance. This is his time to shine. This is his time to step up because the Matt Canada experiment is finally done. Now it's time. Now all eyes truly are going to be on Kenny Pickett. Yeah, everyone everyone says he needs a better O line. He needs a better OC. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. He's kind of had that the past couple weeks. I'm not saying Canada has been better, but. The plays were there. The designs were there. And the, throw, the throws by Kenny were not. The decision making and the reads were not there, which and is which is where Kenny struggles most. That is still going to be retained with Kenny, unfortunately. Yeah. That's what people got to understand. Yes, the play calls suck. Canada sucks. He's finally gone. We'll see what the new guys can do, right? We'll see what Faulkner and Salva can do. But Kenny, as a quarterback, and his decision making and his reads and what he does on the pressure. Everything he is as a quarterback fails. It sucks. That's what people got to understand. That's why I I don't really believe that an OC change is going to boost a lot. All I all I think of with a proper OC is they're going to scheme around Kenny's failures. They're going to make him a checkdown artist. They're going to run better screens, better blocking schemes to use our yak ability. That's that's how I envision Uh, a proper OC building around Kenny Pickett as a starting quarterback. I don't trust Kenny's arm. I don't trust his decision-making. No, and because of that— I don't trust him making—he's a one-read quarterback. And because of that, I mean, that's that's limitations for the offense. We cannot cannot afford to have any more limitations. But for everyone that's giving him the benefit of the doubt, saying he needs a better OC, this is his time now. Yeah. And no, I don't want to hear the excuses. Well, he still needs a better O-line. He needs an actual OC, not not a position coach we— we 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 put the OC job into because we fired. No, that's not an excuse. And I know they're coming. I know we're gonna hear it. Faulkner and Sullivan aren't really OCs. They're just interim guys. I am not ready for that conversation. I am not trying to hear that. That is not an excuse. No. You want a better OC? Well, guess what? He's without Canada. Everyone says he fucked up Kenny's development, and he wasn't really good for Kenny. Well, let's see what Kenny can do now. Believe me, I want to see him succeed. We all do. But I don't think him as a quarterback is going to change much just because Canada's gone. The plays might change. The aggression offense might change. It's up to Kenny if he can strike. Yeah. It's up to Kenny if he can make the reads, make the throws, and can get down the field and, and, and throw the football. Yeah. Please throw the football. The basic fundamentals, just being able to – Execute on those plays. Get the ball to his targets. So I'm not trying to hear no excuse. Everyone everyone using the candy excuse or the O-line excuse. Well, this is his time. This is his time. It is. I'm not trying to hear, well, our interim guys aren't really the O's. I'm not trying to hear that excuse, dude. This is it's it's now or never for Kenny. 
You know, I was already done with Kenny, especially after last, especially after last week. No, after the Browns game, week, last week did it in for me. I was, like, I was done. I'm, I was done with Kenny. Well, now we don't have Canada. I still don't trust Kenny, but let's see what he can do. Yeah, Fine, you don't, you don't I'll have... sit back, I'll observe, I'll watch as a fan, I'll root for him, and we'll see if he can truly step up with. Without Canada. Yeah, so, Kenny, you don't have Canada anymore, so go out there and play like you freaking should, like the first-round quarterback we selected you. Exactly. Go out there and ball out. Go out there and make the plays. Go out there and be a fucking quarterback. Yeah. So, I'm not expecting it, only because you got to watch the get. You got to see Kenny Pickett as a quarterback. He is not good at anything he can do. It's, it's, it's things that... Coaching cannot fix. It's things that uh, OC chains will not make a difference on. Kenny can only fix Kenny. So this is his chance. These next six weeks is his chance. Can he make? Can he go through his reads? Can he throw down the field? Can he throw accurately? It's like he's playing scared. He's playing a little too safe, too conservative. Yeah. Now it's time for him to grow. Am, am I going to be expecting a drastic change? No. Not really. Not entirely. But... This is his shot. This is his chance. Yeah. So he better go out there and perform. And just like uh, just like with Sullivan and, and Faulkner being the co-OCs, we're kind of going into a blind. We're not really knowing what to expect, so we're just hoping for the best. We're just hoping for the best. So we are rooting for Kenny Pickett. And keep in mind. Now, now this is his time. Keep in the mind. Pre- the pressure's actually on him more now. Yeah, and keep in mind, he's going against a Bengals defense that – statistically and rankly, he's not good. They're not good at it. No, they're not. They're not good. You know, he he struggled. Yeah, he struggled against the Browns' number one defense, but he always did against worse defenses. Yeah. He's, he needs a big bounce-back game. He's going against a much worse defense in but the we've Bengals. Been saying, how many weeks have we been saying that? A lot. A lot. But if there's a game for him to bounce back and showcase, hey, it was Canada after all, then he's going to have to go out and perform against a really bad defense in the Bengals. Yeah. The Browns, yeah, sure, whatever. Good defense, but... You got to go out and perform against and bounce back. Yeah. So what you got to do. And that's, that's obviously what we're hoping for. That is, that is what we're our, that, that, that's what we want to see from Kenny and, and the offense, right? So we, we kind of, we, we, we're not really uh, excited or high on Kenny Pickett anymore, but we're excited to see where the offense might go without Canada, right? So. It's going to be an interesting game this Sunday. I guess we might as well get into the Steelers Bengals preview just a little bit. It's rivalry week once again, folks. It's once again AFC North Football Week for our Pittsburgh Steelers. We got to get a win back. I am not going to be okay with us losing back to back games against AFC North rivals in Ohio. And I'm not trying to lose to both Ohio teams. Who both teams will be led by, well, the Browns were led by backup quarterback, and so will the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow is out for the remainder of the season after sustaining a wrist injury last week against Baltimore. So the Cincinnati Bengals season is pretty much done. Oh, they're done. They're done. The Bengals, With, if, without Burrow, forget about it. Yeah, if Burrow cannot throw, the Bengals are done. But that does not mean that the Steelers are just going to waltz into Paycole Stadium and just, oh, it's a backup quarterback. It's nothing. No, oh, this is going to be an easy yeah, victory. They're not going to no. walk into Bengal Stadium and just get a fucking easy dub. It's nope. not. It's AC North football. And as a Steelers fan, if you know, you know. Yeah. And what did we see last week? Exactly. So, yes, I'm still concerned for this game. I'm, a, I'm going a little more excited just because of uh, the fact Cannon is gone. But we're still going, going up against a backup quarterback. Jamar Chase is still a great wide receiver. Yeah. Joe Mixon's arguably coming off his best game all year, but we've been able to slow the run game down. So, yeah, and the Bengals' run game actually this year it's not good. It's not been consistent. No, it's they, not. They've they progressively gone a little bit better week by week, but it's still not no. consistent. They're fact, actually this, this they're comes, actually they're actually thirtieth in rushing offense. This actually comes off as uh, it might be Mixon's last year. It, it does come off that way. Yeah, it does come off that way. Yeah, he's still a very good back, but just the uh, the hassle that he brings and everything like that. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? The drama. That's what I mean. Are they gonna have T. Higgins back? Uh that I don't know. I know he's still injured. He's questionable. Well, they had the they had the mini buy. They but, had the mini buy. But even if they don't have Higgins, they still got decent targets. You know, Tyler Boyd is so underrated. You know, their their fourth stringer Trent Irwin. You know, he's been a very solid hand lately the past right. two years. Yeah. So you know, their depth is nice there. At that, you know, they still got, despite, you know, Jake Browning being the quarterback, they still got hella targets. Oh, yeah. 
So, but Jake Brown and I mean going in go, going into this game only has one touchdown in his entire career. One. Yeah. Which is also as many touchdowns can you pick a throws in a single game, but I digress. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but even, again, don't underestimate Jake Brown. No, don't underestimate cannot. the fact that he has very little experience. He's a backup. You know, he hasn't really done much. It, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He's still got a hell of targets, and that's where the defense is going to have to try to limit them as best as they can. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have to try to, to stop the run, obtain sacks, and, and get turnovers. To which the Bengals' offense, just like the Steelers' offense, they don't normally give up the ball. No. They've been very safe with the football. But they do have a backup quarterback, and I don't want to underestimate them, but history shows, you know, with a backup quarterback playing for the Bengals and the Steelers' defense, you know, it kind of it kind of leans in our favor a little bit. And, yes, we give up chunk yardage. We get them down the field. But the strong point of the defense is they stop them from scoring, and we get the turnovers. Somehow, somewhere, at least they do that. In fact, I think I read a, I read a tweet. I got to find it. I got Because this is some interesting shit. I got to find it. I think I liked it on, the, on Twitter. Let me try to find it. I liked a lot of things today about Matt Canada, so this is going to take forever. <laughs> yeah. I, I read something where we allow the less amount of points since some sort of week. Hold on, let me try. I didn't, I didn't see it. anything about that. Let's see if I can find it. Hold so on. This, is, this is new to me. Oh, uh, please tell me I can find it. I swear I liked it. Yeah, you liked it a lot. I better. Well, listen, any 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 tweet that said Matt, Matt Cannon is fired, yeah, like, yeah, of I course. Mean, I mean, on. I don't blame I'm you. I mean, this Steelers, is all, this is what we all wanted. I'm just a Steelers fan, you know? I mean, come on. Yeah, this is National Matt Cannon was fired day, you know? Yeah. It's a national holiday in Pittsburgh now. Oh, I'm going to remember this for the rest November of the best, 21st. This is the best day of my life. November 21st, 2023 will go down as the day Matt Cannon was fucking fired. Um, fuck, I'm going to have to find it. Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Yeah. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let me find it. I don't think I can find it. I don't think I can find it. Yeah. Well, speaking of the Steelers defense, they uh, have actually... Uh... I think... Well, okay. What well, I will say is that for a certain amount of time, they, they've averaged only 15 points a game. Which really? Which is a okay. low. Uh, they, they don't allow a lot of points. They allow a lot of yardage, which is why we get outgained a lot, also because our offense sucks. Yeah. But they don't allow a lot of points, which is very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. So we're going to need something very similar. We, can, we can't go in underestimating them, but we, we're going to need uh, – we're going to need the defense to keep playing the way they've been playing, just a little stronger. Yeah. Just and- a little stronger. I know we, we – I don't know if we're going to get Minka back. No, uh, Tomlin stated today that, you know, Minka and Montrevious Adams are both working really hard to try to get back on the football field. Yeah, we could use them. And uh, speaking of which, I want to talk about some of the roster moves that the Steelers did on defense because they did a lot this week. They sure did. They signed safety Trenton Thompson to the active roster, so they promoted him from the, fit, uh, the, the, the practice squad to the 53-man roster. They signed. He deserves that. that he, he did. You know, he had a very solid performance very, against very the Browns. Very, good career. First career start. Um. Then for the practice squad, they signed Miles Jack. He came out of retirement, so he passed the physical. He's on the practice squad for inside yeah. linebacker depth. Miles Jack is back. And safety Eric Rowe, former Patriot and, and Dolphin Eagle. and Eagle. He and started Eagle. his career with the Eagles. I know him mostly with the Eagles, but yeah. 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 Uh, he's also been added to the practice squad considering the fact that Keanu Neal's on IR, Minka's hurt. You know, we're pretty bare at strong safety. It's not a bad pickup. It's a, it's actually a solid pickup. You know, starting starting experience, veteran piece. It can't hurt whatsoever, just like the Miles Jack. Depth capabilities, you know, starting experience, veteran. It can't hurt, you know, whatsoever. And the Steelers also placed Elijah Riley on injured this reserve. This disappoints me, man. Elijah Riley in the past couple of weeks has popped off the TV screen. He is everywhere. He's always making plays. Oh, he's, making very, tack- very, he's making strong tackles. He's he's using the nickel blitz, creating pressure, making he, plays. Hell of a nickel blitz. Making sir. tackles. That that upsets me, man. I, he needs more playing time, and when he comes back, he deserves it. I think he's very good depth. Yeah. He's a very good piece for the dime package. And really built his way through training camp, too. Yes. You know, he was a very notable name throughout training camp, you know, so hopefully he gets back real, you know, he 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 gets a a solid recovery, a healthy recovery, a quick recovery at that. You know, we yeah. see him more on the on the field, hopefully later toward the end of the season. Right. But they did add a linebacker today. And no, it was not Shaq Leonard. 
No, no, I was actually surprised he got released by the, uh, or he was waived more so by the Colts. And do you want to go over why the Steelers may not claim them all off waivers? Um, it has a lot to do with the cap situation. Yeah, because apparently, considering he was waived by the Colts, whoever claims him is going to be taking that contract because keep in mind, back in 2021, the Colts re-signed Darius Shaq Leonard to a five-year near $100 million contract with $52 million guaranteed. Mm. And he was waived because he hasn't been getting, he hasn't been an every down linebacker. Granted, it's been he's been dealing with neck and back injuries since that, which is not good for since a that extension he sustained, and he got waived. And whoever claims him is going to have to pay him six point five million the rest of the way for six for, for, six for this weeks. year for this year. So unless they're a contender that needs any bodies they can get, no one's paying that. And and when they whoever. Claims him is going to take that contract 6.5 for the rest of the way this year. And I think for the next three years, he's going to be paid over 15 million each year. Yeah. So I don't know if he ever gets claimed. I'd like to bring him in next year if he's still a free agent. Uh, otherwise, bring back Quan. Keep keep Cole. Keep a landing. Yeah, without so, a doubt, because that trio was very solid. Very solid. I loved what I seen from them. But they signed another linebacker from the Panthers practice squad. They signed linebacker Blake Martinez. If that name rings a bell, he's a former Packer, Giant, and Raider before ultimately he retired at the age of 29 last season because he was planning to start his own Pokemon trading cards company. Uh-huh. And he supposedly, supposedly... He, if I can get it. Yes, guys, we'll take the sign down. Just wait till after the yes, stream. Yes, yes. Wait, wait till the very end of the stream. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great moment. Blake Martinez. He retired in the NFL from twenty in twenty twenty two to open up a Pokemon selling card company, and apparently in less than a year made over eleven point five million dollars. Damn. But that don't sound that sounds fishy. But yeah, exactly. There's a but to this because apparently a couple months back, he was reportedly been he was reportedly banned. From reselling Pokemon cards on whatnot, what I guess is a website. The website whatnot over scamming collectors. Oh, so he's a Pokemon scammer. Oh shit! And I guess because of that, he came out of retirement. He unretired, signed with the Panthers practice squad. He got caught, so he came and he's like, "Nah, man, I'm going back to football." He signed with the Panthers practice squad. That was back on November six. November 21st, the Steelers sign him off the Panthers practice squad to the 53-man roster. Uh, I guess you could say he's a... Don't say it. Steeler. Okay, I'm done. I'm feeling good, okay? Matt Canada got fired. I thought that was good. That was funny, right? Come on. Give me some credit. I can only... Come on! I can only hope he steals a football from offenses. Yeah, he better steal something. Yeah, he better something. Blake Martinez is a Pittsburgh Steeler. I'm feeling good. He Come will on. he will fit in that rotation piece that they're going to continue to have with Atlanta Roberts as the number one and Michael Walker as number two. He's actually listed opposite of Roberts. Right, right. So Walker's a starter, while I would assume Martinez is going to end up being the third stringer, and he's going to be part of that rotation. Now, from what I remember of Blake Martinez – Back in his earlier days in the NFL, the guy was a pretty productive tackler, solid run defender, and even a solid blitzer. He, he is a typical linebacker. Now, that was a couple years ago. He's he's He was out of football for a year, so I don't know if he still has that type of play skill anymore. I, I wouldn't expect him. I know his pass coverage ain't too good either. He, again, he's a stereotypical linebacker. He is an uh, in insurance policy. I wouldn't expect much from him, but that's a body. That's a body we added. So That Can, is someone we might see on, on the defense. Yeah, personally, I'd rather bring in Miles Jack before Blake, but I mean they added two linebackers to the practice squad to make up for our injuries. So no, because you can't you can't settle with the current because it's a lot of unknown. It's a lot of unknown with when we have when we have Roberts, Walker, and right. Mark Robinson. But personally, I was I was pleased with the linebacker, especially Elena Roberts. I want to see more Mark Robinson in there. Uh, Michael Walker was kind of everywhere on the football, but. I was I was pleased with the linebacker room. That's not that that's that's not to say they'll be perfect the rest of the way, but I I, I was I was I was comfortable. And I, but I I think I think you know that was a lot of unknown and a lot of of risk there, considering you yeah. know with the inside linebackers and how unlucky we've been at that position with injuries and all that. Right. You know they they wanna they wanna they wanna add more. 
They want to have more bodies, you know, just in case. Yeah, it's, it's, which it's, you know, it's a good move, and I'm glad that they're 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 adding bodies to the linebacker room. You know, they're they're being extra secure about it. Yeah, they're gonna need to. So how they perform is yet to be determined. We'll have to wait and see. You know how they are, but their extra names, their extra bodies. We'll see what they do in the Steelers uniform. You know, we got a we got a legit Steeler and we got an old Steeler yeah. back in the frame. So exactly. Uh, are there any good linebackers this draft? Yeah, there, there are a few. There are two that come to mind. There's Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, and then there's uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Jr. Bloodlines, man. If, if that <laughs> if that rings a bell, he's Jeremiah Trotter's son. Yep. Yes. Yes, you're getting old. Asante Samuel's son is in football. Antoine, Patrick Sertain's son and, is in football. Joey and, Porter and, and, son and, is in football. And, and, Antoine Winfield. Antoine Winfield's in football. Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, okay. He'll be. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Play, a lot of juniors. I played with these dudes in Madden it's gonna be, when it's I was growing up, It's going to be NFL Junior. That, that should be the new game. Damn, NFL Junior. I, was, I was playing with these dudes in Madden when I was growing up. And now, wow, dude. You were playing as them and against them. Yeah, I know. And now we're watching their kids I know, wreck havoc in the league. Fucking crazy. It's pretty crazy, yeah. John Rye with a 4 9 says, I like Kenny, but with Mason's arm, I would like to see him with these weapons we have. I couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. There is actually uh there's there's discussion around social media. Is Mason Rudolph the best quarterback on the roster? Quarterback wise, I would make that argument. The way the and the reason why is because you already know what to expect with Mitch, and Kenny has been incredibly disappointing. Kenny yeah. sucks as a quarterback. I'm not even get going with the O line or OC excuse. Him as a quarterback and what he does fails. Not saying, not saying Mason is the answer. Mason is the future. That 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 that's been passed. But Mason is not afraid to throw the football. His best trait is the deep ball. Yeah, he loves to air it out. He is a gunslinger in that factor, and that's what the offense could use. Kenny Kenny refuses. Kenny does not look down that direction. It's like he's scared to. He doesn't have an arm. He does not have the arm strength. And as of right now, doesn't have the arm talent. No. Doesn't have the arm accuracy. No. Mason, that's one of his best traits. He knows how to throw the football. He just, he just, he he loves to take chances. He loves to throw it deep. That was always his, yeah. his best trait and, coming and, out of college. And that is what Kenny needs to do. If he starts throwing turnovers, well, at least we know he's slinging it. It might be a double-edged sword to some people. Well, he's, yeah, he's throwing it, but he's throwing interceptions. Yeah, I mean, he's still making mistakes, but... He's slinging it. Mason is not afraid to sling it. Mitch is scared to sl- Mitch is scared to make a mistake, and apparently so is Kenny. Mm-hmm. Mason couldn't give a shit. And I'm gonna throw this fucking football, and nine times out of ten, I'm gonna hit my target where he needs to go. Yeah. So yes, in that re- in that factor, Mason is probably the best quarterback on the roster. I know we keep bringing up his name, and some of you guys might be getting exhausted over it, but truthfully, man, I just think that's the case. But the Steelers are not going to give him the opportunity. They're not going to give him the shot. He's been in every game inactive all season. He was in every game inactive last year until Kenny got hurt. Yeah. And even then, he didn't play football. He didn't play on the no. field. He didn't get no play. And, I, and that's going to continue to remain the case. I mean, yeah. Tomlin's already stated Kenny's the quarterback. He's, yes. not, he's not going to make a quarterback change. Right. He's not going to jump to conclusions. He's going to give Kenny this opportunity now that Kenny's gone. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Kenny is more focused on playing safe too often since Sandwave. I agree. Way too safe. He's afraid to make a mistake. Can he check down? Mitch throws into triple coverage. Exactly. Exactly. His interception. What what game was that? Was that the was that the was that the was that the Jag, Raven- Jag game? Yeah, I remember yeah, that. He threw it right into triple coverage. Did he also do it against the Ravens too? I think he did. Last year. Yeah, when yeah. Kenny got hurt, he, yeah, he stepped threw three in. interceptions versus the Ravens yeah, last year. Yeah. Bum. God. Yo, God. we got the quarterback room switch. We got the quarterback depth chart switched. It's Arguably. Like backward, dude. Arguably. Truthfully. But no, seriously, like we are rooting for Kenny, but we don't think that an OC change is going to be very drastic in his development or in his uh, his productivity, his stats. It might help in in scheming and in some cases, but until Kenny starts playing a little more uh, 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 fearless, I suppose, aggressive, and 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 starts slinging it and and starts working on you know himself as a quarterback in the way he just reads defenses and senses pressure and trying to evade pressure instead of constantly having yeah. to do the freaking spin move. Yeah. The Kenny Pickett like that. Don't do it. 
That oh, is don't a... tempt me now. Come on, Matt Canada got fired. Come on, I got to hit it one time, right? Oh, no. Maybe when the sign comes down. No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I can't laugh, dude. My throat's fucked up. I was celebrating this morning while uh, when Matt Cannon got fired. No, so for real. But, you know, you know, Kenny's still got some things to work on. Hopefully, you know, with this change, he can. But, again, limitations. Low, low, low expectations about that. Yeah. But, obviously, we're rooting for him, man. We're rooting for everyone, man. We're, we are rooting for Sullivan. We are rooting for Faulkner. We're rooting for Kenny. We're rooting for everyone. I just want to see what these guys are going to bring to the team. I want to see what they're going to do. With this offense, with their weapons, how they're going to use their weapons. Are they going to incorporate George Pickens more? Are they going to incorporate Muth? If so, how? Are we going to see the middle of the field? Are we going to see some motion? Are we going to see more Calvin Austin? How are they going to incorporate the run game? Are we going to see some pony formations? What are we going to. The, the, the small details is what I'm looking most forward to. Yeah. I'm not expecting anything crazy. Don't expect the Kenny breakout. Don't expect 400. Don't expect 30 points. Don't. Don't. Just. Focus on the small things. If that's the case, we're going in the right direction. Yeah. And this is the time now. That honestly, man, I, I know we should have we should have been done it. We should have been done it. It should have been done at the bye. He never should have came back. No. But it should have been done at the bye. But like Rob said, better late than never. If you look at our schedule right now, there's no better time to get rid of this bald bum bitch. It's say that fine. Look at that. Look at that. Look, 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 look at our schedule, dude. We got the Bengals. We got the Cardinals, we got the Patriots, we got the Colts, we got the Bengals, we got the Seahawks, and the Ravens. Yep. Some of that schedule looks a little easy, cakewalk, but if yep. you're a Steelers fan, you know, you know, nothing's ever easy. Yeah, considering, because especially the quarterbacks leading the charge for, for these teams, the Bengals, Jake Browning twice. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, to which, I mean, he not living up to that contract. Mac, Mac Jones. J or Bailey Zapp, whoever they want to throw in Doesn't there. Doesn't matter. Uh, Colts, uh, Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. You know he's a solid starter, solid fill-in. You know the Colts are five and five somehow. Jake Browning, again. Then, then we, we got, got the G Seahawks and the Ravens to close it out. Yeah, Geno Smith and Lamar Jackson. And those, the season. those are our two most difficult battles, and those are our two last games where it's 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 the most important. Big time. So these next four games or five games are going to be very crucial. They can't keep losing. They can't keep playing down. And I'm hoping. With, with 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 the timing of Matt Cannon's firing, it, it, it kind of lights a fire under them. Like, hey, yeah, we're six and four, and we we could have won these games. We left points off the board. We're not utilizing these weapons properly. Our our schedule's getting tight. You know, we got a Thursday night game coming up soon. You know, the division is very tough. Like, we got to start picking up the pace. That should be their sense of urgency right now. Yeah. Like like we said. Getting rid of Canada was probably a great confidence booster for everyone. Now everyone's going to have this next certain drive or excitement or desire to play on the field. What, whatever we do with our players and scheming and the play calling, that will be determined Sunday. But everyone's going to have that new sense of morale, which is great. And now with the schedule and the playoffs looming, that should give everyone the sense of urgency to start stepping their game up. So... This could be great timing. This could, this was great timing to get rid of Canada. Long overdue, a couple weeks long overdue, years of long overdue, never should have happened, but at least they did it. Yeah. Now this is the time for them to step it up, and it starts this Sunday versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Our first game without Matt Canna. In three years. I am so glad we can say that. It feels good. It feels good. It feels good. And I didn't think I could say that until next year. I don't have to wait next year. I I, I, I can say it now. We I'll all say, can say it, it I'll now. say it again. The first game without Matt fucking Canada. And we will all be able to witness it Sunday. Thank Christ. Thank Christ. Yeah. Yes. Do I sound sick? Maybe. I'm coming down with something. Excuse me. So if you hear a sniffle or whatever, or if my throat sounds a little deeper, yes. It's you sound I, like you got something clogging. It's because I got sick and tired of Matt Canada for the last three and a half years. Excuse it's me. Finally caught up to him. But uh, that that just oh I gotta get rid of the, I gotta get rid of that oh shit I gotta get rid of that emote for the STN. Yeah, members. that's no longer needed now. Yeah. Oh no. That's no longer needed. Everybody, everybody that's a uh, 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 STN member, flood flood the chat with the yeah, if, one more time, one more time. If you are an STN member, man, this is the last time. Flood the chat. With the blame Canada. That's the last time you will, because I got to take that down tomorrow. Fuck. 
Here, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wow. Shout out to all you guys. I'll start it like that. Boom. Oh, look. I love it. 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 He's fucking gone, oh, man. Oh, man. This is the last. Oh, shit. Is that the last time? It is, man. It's an end of an era, but a good one. I, I, don't be sad. This is what you asked for. This is what we chanted for. This is what we've been wanting. Yeah. Right? It's not a sad moment. This is a fucking beautiful moment right now. This is a beautiful moment we're all sharing together. This is history in the making. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking... This is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Matt Cannon is gone, folks. Say it with me. Matt Cannon is gone. Matt Cannon is gone. I'll play it again. Yeah, still yeah. voice. I love it. I love it. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. na, na. Hey, hey, hey. I'm goodbye. I'm the frame. Na 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 na. Na, it's got me wanting to sing now. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Mr. Clean is out of here. <laughs> Mr. Clean. You mean Johnny Sins? I mean, sure. He says sure. Sure. Nah. Nah. Johnny Sin I prefer Johnny Sins than fucking Matt Canada. <laughs> that man can do it all. <laughs> he can be a fireman, he can be a doctor, he can be a police officer, he can be an offensive oh, coordinator, you shit. name it. Oh, that guy can do it all. That's fucking hilarious, dude. Hitman is gone. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fucking awesome. You guys are great. God. We're all experiencing this moment together. I'm so happy, so proud this guy's gone. It's got me wanting to dance, it's got me wanting to party. Let's go, dude. Let's fucking go. Matt Cannon is gone. Yeah, a man lost his job. Well, guess what? There's so many other jobs out there, and if you're not qualified for a position, you got to get the fuck out. So he's out. Thank God, dude. Thank God. It's about time. The bald bastard is gone. The bald bum bastard is out of here. No more Matt Canada. None of it. And hopefully this Sunday, no more jet sweeps, no more check downs, less check downs at least, and more middle of the field. We might actually be able to see that. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. That's kind of what I'm anticipating. So, <sighs> but I think with Canada being fired, this comes down with an end. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah. You you bought it. I bought it. No, you grab one side. I grab the other. All right, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is when. Uh, don't, don't cry. Don't. This is what we wanted. We said that we were gonna keep this up till he's gone. I'm not used to this. Okay, we're gonna take this down live. It's only right. We kept it up all stream, so now it's time to take. I'm not. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm. I'm. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna keep it forever. I'm gonna take my sweet time getting it down. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it forever, but it's never gonna be hung up again because there's no point. There's no point. So. <sighs> it's gone. It's down. It's down. It's down. <laughs> it happened, dude. It happened. One, one, one more time. One more time. It happened. The sign's gone, folks. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I forgot all about that. God. Oh, the OG. Oh, shit. All right. Oh my God. See, man, this is still running wild. <laughs> Fire can is still going. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god. Yeah, get it Ain't off. Ain't nothing could stop the fire can of chant. Get it off. Oh, oh shit! You knocked down the can. It's fine. You knocked down the blood. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's good, you know. Wow. It's good. Alrighty, folks. New sign Fear the Browns. Who the fuck are you trying to fool? All right, you know what? I'll give you this. You broke us so much, we actually fired a coach. I'll give you that. Yeah, so thank you. I'll give you that. Thank you. I'll Don't fuck yourself, but thank you. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. At the end of the day, fuck Matt Canada. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Steelers. Good riddance. Yippee ki -yay. Motherfucker. And, and no, no swear, so swear jar is off limits. Like, yeah. That is not, that is, nothing's added tonight. Because this is all warranted. Yeah. We have been through three and a half years all of this, all this garbage. All this is from Matt Canada. <laughs> 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 all right. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You know, I really want to just erase that Matt Canada name. You know, I just want to like 
erase it from history. I just I just want to like never speak of it again. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, he's going to be brought up a lot, especially the next couple weeks as we see hopefully the offense improves, but he's gone. We don't have to worry about him. We don't have to see him. It's over. As long as he's out of here, good riddance. It's over. Good riddance. The Matt Canada era is over. And honestly, man, it just, I don't know about y'all, it brightens up my holiday already. It brightens up my Thanksgiving holiday already. It's already off to a phenomenal start. Yeah. Like, I'm loving it. This is awesome. But uh, I think with that being said, man, we're going to end this celebration of a stream and this preview just like that. Matt Canada is fired. No more Matt Canada. And this Sunday will be the first game without Matt Canada. That feels good to say. Yeah. Took three and a half years, three and a half too long, but it finally happened. We ain't got to worry about him. No more. Good riddance. And I never want to hear, see, or speak of you ever again. And I want to propose a toast to you, my brother, to you guys watching the Steelers Nation. Good riddance and goodbye, Matt Canada. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. <sighs> Feels good. It's, just, it's a great day. It's a great day. It's a great day. It's a great day. This is what we've all been waiting for, and it finally happened. With that being said, we're going to get on out of here. We appreciate every last one of you for joining us in the celebratory of a stream. It's great. I'm glad it happened. We're all happy it happened. We'll see what the Steelers do from here on out. We'll see how the offense does from here on out. But I think we are a little more excited because of it. Now we ain't got to worry about Matt Canada. We ain't even got to see him on our television screen. Nope. So that that's a delight itself. So we'll see what happens Sunday. But uh, before Sunday, man, we obviously have Thanksgiving. So I want to wish every single last one of you a happy Thanksgiving. Whatever Myself you, included. Whatever you guys are doing, man, uh, just be safe out there. Safe travels if you're traveling. Um, cherish the family time. Cherish the family time. Enjoy the holiday. Have a great, safe one. And uh, – just eat eat everything you can is what I can say. Yeah. It's the one day where you can eat everything and not feel guilty over it. So just, you live one life, eat whatever the fuck you want. So eat the ever-living shit out of anything that is made at your house. That's yeah. all I got to say. And to make things even better, we also got three football games Thanksgiving. Yeah, so so it makes it even better. Thanksgiving, so. But sincerely, happy Thanksgiving to every single one of you. Cherish the meal. Cherish the family time. Have a great holiday. Have a great holiday. Blessings to all you guys. And we thank every single last one of you for joining us tonight. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys on Sunday is when the next time you guys will see us. We might clip some segments of this, make it separate videos, but we will be live again Sunday for the game versus the Bengals. And uh, hopefully we get a dub. Hopefully we can rebound. Hopefully the offense can do something a little more uh, interesting. So that's what big time. That's what we're excited for. But, again, you guys have a great day. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourselves. And before you know it, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. My favorite time of the year. So you guys have a great holiday. Appreciate every last one of you. Make it a, a, a great holiday. Make it a strong week. See you on Sunday. And at the end of the day, bro, fuck Matt Canada. Yeah. I hate you, bro. I fucking hate you. Go fuck yourself. You bald piece of shit. Good riddance. I'm glad the Steelers called you in the office just to say you're fired. Yeah, waste your gas. Nothing personal. He just sucks, dude. He just He's the worst coach in Steelers history, bro. Goodbye. Adios, amigo. You're not even my amigo. Buta. Christmas came early. Christmas came real early. This is all I wanted for Christmas. Now I gotta find a new one. Uh, I hope the Steelers win the Super Bowl. No, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Ain't happening. That's asking too much. You know what? You know what? I want this, this should be a start. You know, this what? could be a good start to the path of that. You know, right? You know what I want for Christmas? I want Matt Canada to never, never, ever come back. I want Matt Canada to never even be heard of again. I wish him all the well in his life with his family. But I never want to see his name ever again etched in the NFL. I'll get PTSD, bro. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.